Hello, Internet. Today I'm going to show you my uh, setup. Um, uh, that's a uh, telco setup for asterisk uh, on Raspberry Pi. So here we got the um, Raspberry Pi uh, version B, not B plus, the old version B, so 5.12. And we also have Cisco. This is the um, standard Cisco 7940. I also have 7960s. Um, USB power supply, SD card, well, SD card and adapter, because this is the old Raspberry Pi, so it takes big SD cards. Um, enclosure that the Raspberry Pi came with, this is from RS Electronics. And uh, a piece of uh, network cable, obviously the length depends off uh, where your switches are. Uh, as you can see, there is no power cube, power brick for this, uh, simply because my um, switch has a PoE. It's a, it's a Cisco switch, so it actually works without any um, problems whatsoever. And it's nice and neat because you only got one cable that you just plug in. Um, and it's um, it's a nice sort of a neat setup. So the first thing we do after we have all the pieces together is uh, we need to get the uh, image file, uh, Raspberry, RaspBBX. So uh, we go to raspberry-asterisk.org, downloads, and basically just get the latest, latest image of RaspBBX, which is well, this one is 3107-2014. So you can download that one and put it on your uh, um, your hard drive. So then you can go and burn the image um, onto your SD card. Now, it says it's a 4 gigabyte card required. I'm actually using 32 gig uh, card because um, with Asterisk, you've got the option of um, recording um, calls so if you uh, if you care about those you probably need a little bit of extra storage so you don't have to check ever so often uh, to make sure that there's enough space um, on the SD card um, for someone who's got a heavy amount of calls so tons of calls is always good to sort of put an extra hard drive USB hard drive plug into the Raspberry Pi and um, do a partition so you can record um, all your all your call recordings onto a hard drive and sort of leave, leave the um, SD card with the system and updates. So once we got that, we need to put this onto a um, uh, SD card. So once we have the image downloaded off the internet, we can't just copy and paste it onto uh, um, onto a SD card. We need to use this uh, little utility called. Let me just try to zoom in on that. It's Win32 Disk Imager. So go and uh, Google that. You need that, that little utility. That will load the image that you just downloaded off the uh, internet onto the SD card as an image. So once you put that card into your Raspberry Pi, it will boot up to the OS and and you can start executing commands um, using Telnet, or if you're connecting it to the monitor, connect the uh, mouse and keyboard and do some programming. I also like to put Webmin, as it just makes uh, a little bit easier for someone who's not very, very familiar with uh, uh, lines of code. So Webmin is a little bit more um, friendly if you uh, command line challenged. Now here you see the uh, working um, Raspberry Pi um, together with the Cisco switch. This is a Cisco SF302-08P. This is a power over internet, over ethernet. Uh, so if you have a Cisco equipment, Cisco phones, you won't have any problems because uh, unfortunately not all power over 
Ethernet switches um, work with Cisco phones actually is, is a bit of a nightmare. Uh, but this one was a reasonable price, um, eight port uh, plus uh, obviously the, the router. Um, so this is this is the uh, the working model. You can see the lights flashing. It's all all working well. So let's have a look at the GUI. So um, once we have the SD card in, uh, it's always worth uh, mentioning that updates are probably mandatory because you want to keep everything relatively up to date. Um, obviously, you need to set up all the bits with the uh, IP address, router, uh, network mask, so it works on the right network in your environment. Uh, and once you, uh, you've done away with that, then you have a nice um, web interface uh, where you can access um, the PBX uh, from your local computer. Uh, this is this is the main the main screen. Uh, there's also the user portal where you can uh, listen to your voicemails, uh, listen to your conversations um, and so on and so forth. Um, I said I also like to um, work with Webmin. So I have a version of Webmin running. And as you can see, I've got 28.8 gigabyte total. This is 32 gig SD card. Now you need to remember that you need to reformat that SD card to actually get the full total of um, of available space as uh, Linux won't recognize the size so it, it will only show you to have a tiny amount of space that will fill up very quickly so uh, um, have a look at reformatting SD card to work with Linux so you can release uh, the capacity for the system so let's have a look at the PBX let's see how is it working here on this one so let's see, okay, so we have, uh, now this Raspberry is running five trunks. So we have, there you go, there's, there's five trunks, both online. Uh, there are six extensions out of 10. Uh, the processor is using three, 4%. Um, it's probably doing some updates because normally it's, it's just not doing anything. I mean, the average load is not 0.44. Now this setup is okay for two or three simultaneous calls. So it's not a huge call center setup. This is purely because Raspberry Pi is limited. Uh, I mean, we, we, we're having a bit of a problem here with the processor, which probably at the best of conditions could handle four calls in good quality and then the rest would probably suffer a little bit but i've not tested with more than four simultaneous calls uh three were doing okay um there are also a few queues set up here so uh while i'm on the phone um people instead of hearing engage tone they are putting a nice um, orderly queue i like they are hearing announcements uh plus you can have nice music if you uh if you want to sort of make their weight a little bit more pleasurable. Um, and there are also other features that you can uh, take advantage of. Uh, probably one of the best is uh, stopping calls from anonymous, uh, with anonymous caller ID. So if you were having problems with automated calls ringing you all day long, switching to this system will probably save you a lot of time during the day because it will not let them pass. Um, so uh, so yeah, that's that's uh, that's how it's done. Now, if you do want to put your um, Cisco phone into this environment, because this would probably just work with uh, PAP2 and A um, um, phone adapters, and they are okay. But if you you know if you really care of, about the call, the call quality, um, and you really want to have a crisp sound. On both ends of the conversation, it's probably best to um, set yourself up with set yourself up with uh, Cisco. So, what you need is basically you need to set up a TFTP server um, on on your Raspberry Pi. 
Now, TFTP server, uh, what will what, what that does is essentially sends information to devices that request those information. So Cisco will send the request. Um, TFTP server will have a, a stamp a signature of, of the device. So this is, in this case, it will be um, MAC address of the device. And once that's matched up, uh, TFTP will release the file to the device and then you can have that custom config put on the phone, which originally wasn't designed to actually work with this. So this is a little hacking um, that you can do to get your uh, Cisco skinny protocol phones converted into SIP phones, basically. You just need a TFTP server, so you can load the uh, the SIP um, applications on. Uh, and obviously, you also need to configure your... Um, your files, so the phone will then know what server uh, this phone needs to be connecting to, uh, and so on and so forth. So this is this is pretty much it. If you have any questions, uh, just drop me a comment below. I might do a follow-up video with perhaps a little bit more detail. Uh, so if I if I get some people interested in that, I might actually find a little time and do that. So thanks for watching, and uh, good luck with your Raspberry Pi and asterisk setups.